Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to talk about California Assembly Bill 2098 that's been approved by the California legislature and is sitting on Governor Gavin Newsom's desk. I find the bill concerning because it limits free speech and a doctor's ability to question the status quo and discourages healthy dialogue that I think is really important in a democracy. If signed by Governor Newsom, the law states that spreading false or misleading information to patients is unprofessional conduct, subject to punishment by the Medical Board of California that could suspend or revoke a doctor's license to practice medicine in the state. This is a really big deal. The law has been promoted by State Senator Richard Pan, who interestingly enough is a pediatrician himself, to combat the spread of false information that deliberately misleads patients and has led to unnecessary hospitalizations and death during the pandemic. But my issue with this bill is who gets to decide what's misleading? Why can't we trust the public enough to work through this information on their own with studies, data, and open dialogue? I don't think a law will suddenly get rid of the wild and misleading theories that are being promoted on the internet. More legislation will not suddenly cause people to have more faith in our health system. This seems to be something that's being put forth out of fear. And I want to remind the legislatures in California that some of the most wonderful and widely accepted medical theories of today were initially criticized and summarily disregarded by those in the established medical fields at the time. Here are a few more recent examples. Dr. Barry Marshall, a gastroenterologist from Western Australia, was summarily shunned in the mid-1980s when he proposed that stomach ulcers were caused by bacteria and not spicy foods, overproduction of stomach acid, and stress. It's now widely known that the bacteria called H. pylori can not only cause stomach ulcers, but people that have this bacteria in their stomachs are at increased risk for gastric cancer. In 2005, Marshall received the Nobel Prize for his discovery. I wonder how Dr. Marshall would have been treated in California today. Would he lose his medical license for spreading false information? And next, Francis Peyton Rouse, a researcher, was ostracized and severely criticized for his work stating that viruses can cause cancer when he published it in 1911. We now know that there are at least seven viruses associated with cancer in humans and that up to 20% of all cancers can have an infectious source. The most commonly known virus is HPV or human papillomavirus, the sexually transmitted disease that causes cervical cancer. But Rouse was not awarded the Nobel Prize until 55 years after his discovery. The sad fact is that he quit studying cancer because of the intense negative pressure he received from the medical community. Think of all the lost years of research and lives lost waiting for this theory to be accepted. And most recently, Dr. James Allison received a Nobel Prize in 2018 for his work pioneering cancer treatment using a patient's immune system. It's such a beautiful and novel idea to use a patient's own elegant immune system to fight cancerous tumors. But when he first proposed these ideas, he was treated with scorn and skepticism and was told that his ideas were, quote, snake oil. Even with scientific proof, it took three and a half years for a biotech partner to take the antibody he had discovered into mice and turn it into a drug that worked safely in humans. Dr. Allison was relentless during his initial years working to get his ideas accepted. The point of innovation is to do things that have never been done successfully before. Science is a field that cannot be stifled by fear of retribution for proposing ideas that at first may seem crazy or ridiculous. The scientific community needs to allow the freedom to flesh these ideas out in the lab and with scientific studies. I'm afraid that if this bill passes in California, doctors and scientists will be afraid and nothing flourishes in fear. If you would like to learn more about California Assembly Bill 2098, please see the link below in the description. And if you would like to protest this bill, there's information about how to contact Governor Newsom's office directly. I'd love your thoughts and inputs below. Please comment. Thanks for joining me.